preacher in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Richard Keller, for those of you I have not met so far. Um, this is my second week as your pastor, and the church was kind enough to invite me back last week, after last week, so um, it is a pleasure to be here this morning, and it is an honor and a privilege to lead you in worship this morning. So I greet you all and pray that this will be a time for you to be with God, a time for you perhaps to learn something that you didn't know already, and a time to spend time in worship to Almighty God. So with that, let's turn to Phyllis for the announcements. Good morning. I love smiling faces. It's wonderful. Some people that I see every Sunday, some that I have seen for the first time. Welcome. Yeah. Our announcements that we have at this time, we have a uh, flea market scheduled. Uh, it'll be for Saturday, July the 15th, and I do believe that's next week. So uh, that'll be from 8 to 1. Um, spaces are priced. They're looking for volunteers. And if you're available to volunteer, please see Diane Bowman. Are there any other announcements that I may not be aware of? Seeing none, I'll move on to welcoming those who are online. We extend a very warm welcome, very wholehearted welcome to those of you who join us um, on the, join these services in, in your own time. Um, you're most welcome, and uh, we'd love to see you here on Sunday mornings at 10.15 here at Trinity United Methodist Church. Only God knows what will come of our gathering together. Let us share the peace with one and one another. The peace of Christ be with you. And also, also with you. Please share that peace with each other. Let us not forget Pastor Richard and Anne up front and those on the camera. This is the day that the Lord hath made.
for the blessing of a new church year. We ask your blessing on our pastor and our lady. Help us to spread the good news. Help us to reach out to a troubled and burning world. We join together to say that in Christ we are one world, one family under God's rule. Let us worship with hearts open to love of God, God, with hands outstretched to one another, and spirits willing to live as disciples of the living Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily This is the time that we set aside for our prayers of confession. We have been called by God to live faithful lives, living as Christ did. The Spirit calls, to, to, calls us to turn from our sins and confess how often we fall short of Christ's example. Let's take a few moments of silent prayer for your forgiveness. join me in this unison prayer of confession. God of all creation, ruler of all your people, you know us completely how bad we are and how good we are. We humbly confess the mistakes we have made and the good we have neglected and the promises we have broken. We pray that the power and joy of your love will become a mighty force in our lives. Help us to develop a good and us, and with your spirit's, spirit's force, on our brain, be a firm of the good of all, through the grace of Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Hear these words of assurance from the letters to the churches in the book of Revelation. To those who have won the victory, I will give the right to eat the fruit of the tree of life that grows in the garden of God. Let us now sing together Spirit Song, number 347 in the hymnal.
worries and concerns. Ms. Bobby? It is always a pleasure to be together as a church family to uh, share the joys and concerns we might have. First, I would like to thank the greeters and the ushers. You know, as you come in every Sunday, we have greeters and we have ushers in the North X area and Fellowship Hall area, and we are most thankful for that. If anyone is interested in, in becoming a part of that group, please let me know or let one of the greeters or ushers know, and we would love for you to come and join us on, on Sunday morning. Also, a joy uh, is, is that we know that we've uh, been concerned about Marilyn Gallagher. She was in the hospital. She went to rehab, and she is home now. She is doing well and wants to thank everyone for their prayers and their concerns. So we're glad to hear that. Also, today, Nancy Kerrigan, who is a friend of Peggy um, uh, Papish, um, she has a birthday tomorrow, so we wish her a happy birthday. Are there any other birthdays to celebrate? Okay, well, oh, yes, Dan. My brother Richard is in, uh, down south at his birthday is today. Oh, so He's, happy uh, birthday to Richard down south. <laughs> Which it probably is more. We've got a whole lot of figures here. pointing at that woman right there. Uh -huh. Maria. Oh, Maria, is it your birthday? On Monday the 17th. Oh, that's okay, so that is great. <clears throat> Monday the 17th. Absolutely. So we wish a uh, happy birthday to them. Um, also, uh, Nancy Kerrigan, she is not doing well. She is having um, uh, concerns for a possible infected leg and other health concerns, so we want to keep uh, Nancy in, in our prayers. Also, um, we want to continue praying for all those who are um, having, who have cancer, who are having treatments, chemo, and radiation. We also want to uh, keep in, in uh, our prayers Jim Smith. You know, Jim Smith was having uh, chemo and radiation. He was in the hospital. He has returned home. Um, they have stopped uh, chemo at the time, um, but he is home still having many health issues. And we not only want to pray for, for Jim uh, Smith, but we want to pray for April, his wife who is now trying to be caregiver for him at home. Um, we not only want to think of April as a caregiver, we also want to keep Phyllis Martin's dad in our prayers. Um, he is trying to decide whether or not uh, he should, should consider um, uh, assisted living for, for her mother. So we certainly uh, have him in our prayers also. Not only uh, is uh, Mr. Martin and um, April Smith being caregivers, but there are many caregivers that we might know, and we certainly offer prayers for all caregivers, whether it's uh, a son or a daughter, or a husband or wife, or just a friend. We want to keep all caregivers in, in our prayers. Also, we have continuing prayers for uh, Joel Holmes, um, uh, the pastor of uh, Christ United Methodist Church. We have uh, concerns for Nancy Lance, who is recovering from surgery. We also have uh, continued concerns for Jerry Goman, who is um, still in the hospital. They have changed his medications, and they're hoping that that is going to help with a couple of his health issues um, so that he might be able to come home Monday or Tuesday. Our, uh, we also have continuing prayers for all of those in our congregation and friends and, and family who are going through health issues, no matter how uh, big or how small. Are there any other prayers? Of yes. Sophie is going um, to the United Methodist um, camp. She leaves to 
is bursting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me whole. There are millions in this world who are craving. For you did not dance, we wailed and you did not mourn. For 
John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son, knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let's turn the Lord in prayer. Almighty and eternal God, we thank you again for bringing us together this morning. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to hear your word and to hear your word proclaimed. We ask, Lord, that we not simply be hearers of the word this day, but doers of the word as well, and that we might use your word for the benefit of your kingdom and your people. And I ask you, Lord, either through me or in spite of me, that you might bring the word to your people today. We ask all these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our gospel lesson this morning concludes with a call from Jesus. There are words of comfort. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. We live in an incredibly hectic world. It is a world with deadlines, packed calendars, emails, and texts. We are often called as Christians to multitask, to do lots of things that we need to do. Sometimes it is the work of the church, sometimes it is the work of our secular life. Sometimes we drag ourselves out of bed each day, go through our hectic lives, and then go back to bed exhausted, only to start a different day. In this hectic world, we forget to take time for ourselves. <coughs> I've been through a number of evaluations in my church and a number of conversations with people who are my supervisors, and they always will tell me that self-care is an issue that I still need to deal with. So oftentimes we don't even find times for ourselves, much less to find time for God. As a result, we grow tired, weary, stressed, and even become ill. I face these difficulties in my daily lives, daily life, which includes a full-time job, pastoral ministry, a part-time job, and a family. I have a 92-year-old mother-in-law living with us. You can imagine the difficulties and stress that causes, particularly at times when neither she nor Louise are able to hear each other. I have a daughter and a son, 
who I don't get to see as often as I would like. I oftentimes don't get to my grandchildren's sporting events. And I confess that as a result of it, I don't spend the time that I should be spending on prayer, on scripture, and on spiritual release. One of the things that I'm looking at as a part of this transition is that perhaps it is time, sometime in the fall, to have a time of spiritual release, a time of spiritual renewal. But you know, the interesting thing is, even when we neglect God, and even when we forget God, God never forgets us. God is always there for us. We used to have a sign in our house that was a two-word expression. It simply said, God provides. Our God is a God of comfort who helps us when we are weary. God helps us when we are burdened with work, with family, and even our responsibilities in the church. Our God comforts us in the storms of life, pain, suffering, and death. I recall walking by the desk of one of the people in my office who has a sign up that says, sometimes God calms the storms and sometimes God calms the child. And that's what God does. And no matter what the problem, no matter what the stress, God is there for us. In our gospel lesson, Jesus has an invitation. Come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Now it's important for us to recognize when we read scripture what the context is. So Jesus was not talking to people in 21st century America. Jesus was talking to people who were burdened by Roman rule. Jesus was talking to people who were burdened by the rules and regulations of the Pharisees. But yet, this same message about taking care of our burdens applies to us today. Now one of the things that God is, is providing for us is the invitation comes to those who are burdened by sin and guilt. It also includes those who are burdened by life's problems. Work, family, stress, financial difficulties, hunger, poverty, illness, imprisonment, addictions, homelessness, and many others. Each of us has different burdens that we can bring to the foot of the cross. Each of us has heavy burdens that only Jesus Christ can heal. The invitation comes with a promise that God will give us rest. I know many folks find the reading this morning from Isaiah to be one of their favorites. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. What incredible words of comfort they are for those of you, those of us who are weary. But I want to emphasize that rest is more than just sleep. St. Augustine said, our hearts are restless until they find rest in thee. Rest is shalom. And for those of you who don't know the word shalom, it is a Hebrew word. And it talks about physical, spiritual, and mental well-being and wholeness. So it's about the whole person. It's not just physical. It's spiritual. It's mental. It's whatever you need to become a whole person. The hymn says, softly and tenderly, Jesus is coming. And it tells us at the end of the verse, Jesus is calling the weary to come home. 
Jesus then says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Now, many years ago, when I was first reading this particular passage, I didn't know what a yoke was. And I remember one of my advisors telling me, what he, explaining to me what a yoke was. It's a wooden harness put over the shoulders of ox and other livestock to help them pull weight. Now, it's also important to recognize that in Jesus' time, it was also used for slaves and other servants. Now, how many of you have ever felt a situation where you have had the whole world on your shoulders? Okay? That's what we feel like sometimes. We feel like we have the whole world on our shoulders. <coughs> sometimes it's actually physical. And we actually talk about shouldering burdens. We learn from Jesus through prayer, reading, and understanding Scripture. Worship, witnessing, and serving others in mission and ministry. So that is what it means when Jesus says, learn from me. Jesus then concludes today's lesson by teaching, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now Jesus offers a yoke that is not a burden. And that yoke is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is easy because Jesus is yoked beside us. One of the things about a yoke when you have two oxen together is that they share the burden. And that's what Jesus does for us. Jesus shares the burden with us. And actually, Jesus is the one taking the lion's share of the load. Taking on our burdens and empowering us to do the work of the kingdom. The other thing is, Jesus' yoke is easy because it fits well. It allows us to do the kingdom work that matches our spiritual gifts. Now the yoke is also easy because it's no longer yoked to Satan. And we can avoid the pain, suffering, and guilt of sin. Now those of you who were here last week will remember we talked about freedom from Satan, from sin, and from death. The yoke is easy and the burden is light because it is rooted in the love of Jesus Christ. The yoke is easy because Jesus loves us and we can share that love with others. We can be the yoke for someone that is dealing with life's problems. In 1918, Howard Loomis was abandoned by his mother at Father Flanagan's home for boys. I know many of you have heard of Father Flanagan's home. Howard had polio, and he wore heavy leg braces. Walking was difficult for him, especially going up and down steps. Having lived with Louise and knee surgeries and other things, we know how difficult steps can be from time to time. And so what happened was some of the older boys started carrying him up and down the steps. And one day Father Flanagan asked Reuben Granger, one of the older boys, if carrying Harold was hard, and Reuben replied, he ain't heavy, Father. He's my brother. In 1943, Father Flanagan saw a similar picture with a similar caption underneath it. It became the motto of the Home for Boys. In 1969 and 1970, for those of you who are popular music fans, you probably were following along. And remember that in 1969, the Hollies, and in 1970, Neil Diamond had hits with the same title. He ain't heavy, he's my brother. 
Now, it's also important to recognize that a yoke is a sign of submission. Again, it was used for the oxen to keep them under control. It was used for slaves and others to keep them under control. Now, the yoke is a free gift, but it calls on us to yield to Jesus and to obey the gospel. It calls on us to allow Jesus to direct us, lead us, and encourage us. How often in our lives do we try and do things on our own instead of allowing Jesus to guide us? So to accept the yoke, we must accept the call to discipleship. We must turn away from sin. You will recall last week we talked about the full armor of God. And it was interesting when we had the reception last week, I noticed on the wall that there was a sign with the full armor of God. I also noticed a sign in the, in, in the room that said morning has broken. So I'll give you a term that we used in my old church, which is, we call them Godwings, where God has the ability to reach us in some way. So we need to turn away from sin and dedicate our lives to Jesus Christ. And we need to share the love of Christ with others in our mission and ministry. Jesus offers us rest for our souls. Finding rest begins by God taking time away from the hustle and bustle of life and spending time with God. Now, if you walk through my house, one of the things that you will find is there are several signs in the house that have Psalm 4610 on them. It is one of our favorites. It says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the, um, in the earth. Now being still is not just simply the absence of movement. It comes from the Hebrew word rapha, which means to relax, to let go, or release. How difficult it is for some of us to follow the adage that says, let go and let God. And my wife is staring me down as I say that because she knows that I'm probably as guilty as anyone of not letting go. It is not just a matter of stopping what we're doing to spend time with God. It means that we must recognize that we're not in control. We must submit to Jesus who does control our lives. It is a matter of humility. It is a matter of trust. It is a matter of faith. As the Church of Jesus Christ, we face daunting challenges. Whether they're administering our church, preparing for worship, Bible study, and other activities, reaching out to new, find new disciples for the transformation of the world, or engaging in mission and ministry for those in need. I don't know that many people in this, in this audience today know the challenges that we faced in making a transition in an extremely narrow, short period of time, but we managed to do it with everyone's help. As Christians, we need to come to Jesus Christ when we are weary. If we are weary and burdened with our day-to-day -day problems, we will be unable to properly use our spiritual gifts and be the vessels through which Jesus Christ witnesses and heals others. We need to come to Jesus Christ to have our spiritual batteries renewed. I will tell you that this is a particular problem for pastors. We face high levels of stress in managing our churches. I was at an annual conference the beginning, the end of May, the beginning of June, and I don't think there was a pastor that I talked to that didn't say, I have problems in my ministry. 
A, 19, a 2022 study by Lifeway Research says, while nearly half the pastors say discouragement and distractions are challenges they face, 63%, almost two-thirds, says stress emerges as the number one challenge for pastors. Almost two-thirds. Matt Hensley states this stress includes issues such as finances, relationships, and time. And again, as pastors, we need to practice self-care so that we can do the work of the kingdom. And so I challenge all the leaders in this church to challenge me to engage in self-care as we move forward together. So I challenge you to spend quiet time with God today. It is certainly going to be difficult for some of us with tight schedules and the noise of the world, but it is important to pray and read scripture every day to communicate with God. Again, it may also be useful to take a spiritual retreat where you focus exclusively on God, where you can come to him and accept the yoke of Jesus Christ. So in this coming week, my challenge to you today is to make time in your busy schedule to be with Jesus Christ. But do that with the assurance, and our God is all about assurance, that even though you are weary, Jesus will give you rest. And the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He is the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father. From thence he shall come to judge the swick of the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Lord. Just a quick note that you may make donations today to the United Methodist Committee on Relief or UMCOR. Let us turn to the doxology.
and ask for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you. May Almighty God keep you. May Almighty God's face shine upon you. May you go out into the world this day knowing that you are yoked with Jesus Christ and that Jesus Christ will share your burdens. Know that you have Jesus Christ who will give you rest when you are weary. So as you go out into the world, find time to be with Jesus today. In prayer, in scripture, and in whatever other way you can be with him. Find ways to reach out to a troubled and hurting world. We ask all these things in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.